Okay, so here's the question is, what's wrong with these arrows? So why are these arrows wrong? What's, what's the problem? Okay, so press pause, think it through, then when you're ready, press play, we'll go through them. Okay, so let's have a look here. We are doing what? What is this arrow telling us to do here? This arrow is telling us that we are going to break this double bond between, let's say, carbon one and carbon two, and we're gonna form a new pi bond between carbon two and carbon three. So what would that mean? What would happen here? Well, we would form this. That's what this arrow is telling us to do, it's telling us to break CC C1 to C2 and form C2 to C3 pi bond. And what's the problem here? It's this Texas carbon here, right? This five coordinate carbon. So obviously we don't wanna break the octet rule. So that's, that's why this arrow is, is not legit. Okay, what's the problem in this resonance form here? Well, it's actually gonna be the same thing, right? We're going to be breaking this carbon-carbon pi bond and we're gonna be forming, if we look at what that would look like, CH2, we'd have to um, have five bonds to carbon in order for this to be legitimate. And of course that V10 electrons, that is not allowed. So this is also illegal. So again, 10, you know, five coordinate carbon, uh, which I'm circling here, uh, 10 electrons, that's bad. So that's not gonna work. And actually it's the same example here. I just drawn a lot of different examples here, haven't I, of, of different ways to, to make illegal five coordinate carbon. And that would give us O with a single lone pair. And uh, well, it'd be a positive charge here, but this would be five, again, it breaks the octet rule. So this is not, not legal. Okay. Uh, down here, oh, well, another example of uh, an illegal resonance form because we would we would get nitrogen with a lone pair and two bonds on it. Okay, so ten electrons and illegal. So we can cross that out. Now this is a weird one. Um, this next one we have a positive charge. And we're trying to show, I'm not sure what, okay? This positive charge, arrows, okay, so arrows are showing the flow of electrons, right? And in this arrow here, we're trying, it's showing, I'm not sure, showing the flow of positive charge, like carbocation. So arrows are supposed to show the movement of an electron pair. And this clearly does not. I mean, we can't move the carbocation. There's no electrons here. There's no, no electrons to move. So in other words, this is not a legal, uh, legal arrow. So we can cross that out. And actually it's the same thing here. There's actually no electrons at the tail of this arrow on the nitrogen here. There's no lone pair of electrons to move, so that's not legal either. Okay, so that's also bad. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this arrow per se. Uh, that's not, not, not wrong, but this arrow is bad because uh, there's no electrons from this nitrogen. Okay, one last example. Okay, so add on one arrow to make each of these resonance forms better or to actually make them work. So I'm telling you right now, they're illegal as they're drawn, but you can fix them 
if you add one extra resonance error or a uh, curved error. So press pause, work on it yourself when you're ready, press play, we'll go through. Okay, so what's the problem with this first example? Um, well, as drawn, okay, what's it telling us to do? It's telling us that we're forming a double bond between these carbons and this is bad, right? This is five coordinate. So how could we fix this? How could we make it such that this is actually legal? Well, we should move or break, a, we can't break a single bond, right? That would be against resonance, but we can break a, a double bond. So let's do that. Let's break a double bond and we're gonna move that up to the oxygen where it's gonna become a lone pair, okay? And so that would actually work. In that case, we would get this. And we would have negative charge. Okay, so that works. Now that's good. Now what's the problem here? Again, these are all gonna be variations of breaking the octet rule. We need to draw an arrow that's gonna fix that. So we could draw in maybe the hydrogens here, that would help. Uh, we, we would have five bonds to carbon, this, this carbon, if we just followed the octet rule, or we followed this arrow blindly, right? We'd have that. And we'd have a positive charge here. So in order to fix that, what we need to do is to break this pi bond and become, have it become a lone pair. So at some point you're gonna need to do a move where the pi bond becomes a lone pair. That's the only way to make this, it's gonna be the only way to make this allowed um, so that you're gonna have a lone pair on one of your carbons. So let's just draw what that would look like. So that would look like, let's redraw this. If we drew that out then it would be like this. So lone pair, negative charge, and now we have, we have a hydrogen here, positive charge um, over here, and that works, okay? It's not the most stable resonance form, but at least nothing's breaking the octet rule. Okay, so that's okay now. Uh, this one here, well, again, it's gonna be breaking the octet rule, so we need to add a second arrow and we should break the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen. That is going to give us this. The lone pair on the nitrogen and positive charge on that carbon. And that is now okay. It was not okay before because we would have, we would have had a five coordinate carbon, but now it's okay. All right, and again, breaking the octet rule. So how do we fix that? Um, well, let's, let's add an arrow here. So we're going to break the pi bond, and move a pair of electrons to the carbon. That would give us this. And lone pair, well, it's really bad looking lone pair, isn't it? Lone pair, negative charge. Okay, and then it would be a positive charge on the nitrogen. Now this works, we're not breaking the octet rule. Good. And again, this would also create five bonds to this carbon if we just follow the rule blindly. So let's adjust this with one arrow and that would give us this. Okay, and it might help to draw in the implicit hydrogens here just to sort of sort out the fact that we're not going to be breaking, again, not breaking the octet rule. So it's very important not to break the octet rule. Make sure that you're following, make sure these arrows work out and that, you know, everything you're doing is going to work out. Like I, we've made these mistakes before. I certainly made a lot of these mistakes and, you know, your TAs or professors have made these mistakes. When they were learning organic chemistry, it's part of the process of learning that you, you make these types of small errors and it's not the end of the world. So just keep an eye out for uh, breaking the octet rule. Certainly you want to avoid that. Um, 
and in, there's many cases where you avoid drawing arrows where you're going to break the octet rule. Avoid drawing arrows where you've got a tail on a positive charge. Um, you also want to make sure you're not moving single bonds around. You're only breaking double bonds or forming double bonds. Um, and you also want to make sure that you keep track of the number of electrons, that it's balanced with respect to the number of electrons. You're not adding or subtracting electrons. And you're not, not adding or subtracting hydrogens either or other atoms. So as long as you keep all those things in mind, then you should be good drawing resonance forms because it's a very important skill with organic chemistry and it's very easy to make mistakes. But with practice, you get better and better until it sort of becomes second nature to you. So good luck.